All right, you guys, today we're going to see how well uh, we can get through this video. It's Easter weekend. The kids are just absolutely crushed on candy, screaming just on the other side of this wall. I apologize. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome to Inverter Always. For those of you who are not, welcome back. I'm Dana. Today we're going to be talking about A3 error codes specifically related to VRV products. Uh, when you have a VRV indoor unit, it either has a jumper built into the indoor unit for an external condensate pump to be added, or it's going to have a built-in condensate pump with a built-in float switch. Your two connectors for your float switches, depending on the indoor model that you have, is either going to be an X8A jumper or an X15A jumper, and that's just going to be dependent on the indoor unit that you have. Recently, I've had an abnormally high number of A3 calls. People have been doing startups and having A3s during the startup for whatever reason. And I thought this would probably be a simple video to do. There's only a couple things it can be. Uh, since it's Easter weekend, my allergies are absolutely driving me insane. If you can't tell, I apologize. I wasn't going to do a video this weekend, but I didn't do one last weekend. So I thought, you know what, this would be a good one to give you guys just because it's going to be a shorter video. It's going to be a, a simple to the point video. So you guys, I hope you enjoy. If you do, click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, let's jump right in. So anytime you get an A3 error code, it's usually going to be because your internal float switch tripped. If you look at a FX SQ, FX ZQ cassette, any indoor unit that has a built-in condensate lift pump, uh, you're going to have a built-in float switch. And that float switch is going to be a contact closure on either the X8A or X15, X15A uh, connector. And all you have to do to test your float is to check continuity on that float switch. So you unplug it from the board, check for continuity with your meter. You either have continuity or you don't. You can even in some cases like on FX EQ models with two screws, drop the drain pan down during startup, power up the indoor unit, and you can sit there and actually trip the float switch with your meter on the connector to, to see continuity or, not, or no continuity. Um, anytime you have an A3 error code on a new startup, it's generally either a bad board or a bad float switch. Um, if you have a cassette, typically this is going to be because uh, sheet rockers cut through some wires. It's a very common thing that happens. Um, but if you check the continuity on your float switch and you have continuity, then most of the time it's the board. Um, in some cases, you'll replace the board and notice that when you plug in the float switch to the new board, you still have an A3. In this case, you need to replace the float switch itself or very carefully inspect the connector because sometimes what will happen is the wires, they have these little pins inside the connector that will actually get pulled out or become loose. So you do want to inspect the connector during the testing process because it's possible maybe you have a bad float switch connector. Um, that is the most common scenario on new startups because obviously if the equipment hasn't been running, you're not going to have necessarily a filled up drain pan. So there wouldn't be any reason to suspect a bad drain pump. Having a bad drain pump on indoor units that have built-in pumps um, is not going to necessarily give you an A3 immediately because the bad pump is then going to have to allow the water to rise in the drain pan to a level that then trips the float switch. Um, let's take into a example here where we have maybe a unit that does not have a built-in condensate pump. So an FXAQ wall mount, for example. Any indoor unit that does not have a built-in pump is going to have a little jumper. And depending on what indoor unit it is, it's either going to be a jumper on X8A or a jumper on X15A, X15A. The wall mount has this little tiny baby jumper on X15A. It's plugged into the bottom right-hand side of the unit. Well, if you have a condensate pump that you are adding to that unit, an external condensate pump, you need to plug in the normally closed float switch alarm wires, the contacts, to that jumper. So very, very carefully, you need to cut that jumper. You need to um, strip the wires back, butt connector to your external condensate pump floats. Now you're going to notice that these jumpers are very small. In the off chance that you can't make that work, Daikin does sell a longer pigtail connector replacement for that jumper. I'll go ahead and I'll put the part number up on the screen so you can see what that part number is. 
Uh, so you can pick that up. It just gives you a little bit more wire to work with. So in the event that you get an A3 after the system has been operating, then in these cases, it is normally due to a failed pump. If it is a failed pump, then you can actually check the voltage output of the pump from the board. Uh, to give you guys an example, if you had an FXZQ cassette, a TAVJU model, then your drain pump's gonna be on X102A and you should be looking for 13 volts DC. If you have, let's say an FXSQ, TAVJU, it's gonna be X25A and also 13 volts DC. Something like an FXMQ though, uh, one of the PBVJU models, it's still X25A, but you're actually looking for 220 to 240 volts AC. Um, one of the best things, I'll put a snippet up here so you guys can see now, but one of the best things to do anytime you have an A3 is to refer to the service manual flowcharts because the flowcharts are gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to diagnose that A3. The first thing is to always check that float. I already talked about it, check for continuity. If you have continuity, great. It could be a bad board. Make sure you check the jam pan, but it is also sometimes a bad float even though you have continuity. Kind of sounds strange. Usually it's because of the connection that's being made through that connector. Yes, we see continuity, but when you snap it onto the board, it's not making a good connection. And so the board doesn't see continuity. If it isn't that, then it is possibly a drain pump. So depending on the inner unit that you have, what you need to do is find where the drain pump plugs into the board and you can just look at the indoor unit wiring diagram and then from there you do need to go to the service manual to figure out are you looking for 220 to 240 volts ac or are you looking for a dc voltage so depending on the indoor unit that will de that will determine what the voltage is for the pump output if you have a bad pump well that would explain why the float tripped sometimes it's not a bad pump though sometimes you have a plugged drain um, and in some cases, and this isn't as often, is as long as the installers have been to the trainings, but in some cases, the condensate drain riser will actually be installed in incorrectly. Now, if you look at the installation manual for any indoor unit, I'll just grab one and throw one up on the screen here. For example, at FXZQ, you'll see that there is a maximum amount of drain piping lift that you can install before you have to gravity drain from there. You also have to make sure that you always maintain the drain riser pipe diameter of three quarter inches. If you upsize that drain riser to say one inch, then what's gonna end up happening is that pump is gonna pump out that condensate, it's gonna shut off, that condensate's gonna come back down and trip the float. The tripped float is then going to turn on the condensate pump, it's gonna pump out that condensate, the float switch is going to then not be tripped and the drain pump is going to turn off and then that condensate is going to come back in and trip the float again and after multiple cycles of this tripping you're going to get an af and when you get the af that's kind of like ah you know what that means so typically you get an af because that drain riser is installed incorrectly and now i've had multiple trips of the float switch over and over and over and that is 99.9% .9 of the time an installation error I've seen jobs installed beautifully and then all the drain risers are one inch drain risers and that has to get changed out. It has to be a three quarter inch drain riser and it has to be less than that maximum allowed and it's gonna be a different height. Sorry about the dog. It's gonna be a different height for every single indoor unit. So you have to go to the installation manual for the indoor unit that you're piping up to to figure out what is the maximum height that I can actually install the drain piping. So you guys, that's going to be about it for today. I told you it was a pretty simple video. Check that float switch, check the drain pump for voltage, inspect the drain pan, make sure it's making a good connection between the board and the little float switch connector. Obviously inspect any indoor unit that has a built-in condensate pumps uh, drain riser piping. And other than that, you know, I mean, there isn't a whole lot to an A3. Of course, if you have an AF, then you know right away it's installation related. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Pretty easy video for today. You know, with allergies kicking my butt, I don't want to do a lot of talking. So you didn't get a whole lot of explanation in today's video. But yeah, you guys enjoy your Easter weekend. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, guys, thank you for watching Inverter Always. I hope you all have an awesome day.